so here we are just with the cube and I'm just going to press S Z and then S and Y and begin scaling it and we'll do kind of a machine style demo so I'm just going to press D jump over in the box cutter and we're just going to begin just cutting some strange angles because we definitely need something to play off of in order to make this interesting so having angles cut in just via line to view will give us an interesting result now I'm just moving around looking in top view side view and we can just mirror this to the other side with alt x and just continue working in our angle so we have something like this I'll shift click sharpen in order to roll down um, auto smooth in order to be a little more um, showing at the surface and we can use alt V and use EVHQ to actually really see the surface a little bit better and so this is our starter shape and we could just press control A and make this a mesh and so with the default bevel I'm able to and merge these points at last, grab this edge, and just begin beveling to get something like that. We can um, begin dissolving to get back to an N-GON because uh, there are cases in which N-GONs can be beneficial, especially in the conceptualization process, um, as I'm attempting to show here. So for this, I have to make a hard choice between whether I want that one or this one next door, and I'm actually going to choose this one, but We'll dissolve that edge in order to give ourselves a little bit of room in order to buffer and so with default bevel you bevel at a profile of 0.5 so um, whenever that gets changed it does change the bevel experience but i'm typically used to being able to grab an edge like you see me doing and then grabbing it and beveling it and smoothing it out to just get something a little bit more around it so sometimes even these um, situations where the edge clamps and it gets disadvantageous we can actually use it to our advantage like I'm showing here where we still was able to make it work out and we can just kind of grab and consolidate and really simplify it in order to really pull a unique shape out of this cube just really fast whenever it comes to the bevel and I can just shift click sharpen and we roll the wheel down to get something a little more satisfactory and then we got to get in and of course either check for doubles but I always find myself just grabbing an edge and just sliding it just slightly in order to get it to not trigger the auto smooth at this point but really just like that we we're able to get in and make a really interesting shape just playing around with this default bevel with control B and that's really what the default settings represent to me is just a default classic bevel where you grab an edge and you either get it down to two segments to just get a classic edge uh, or a chamfer as I would refer to it correctly I suppose and then something that's a little more rounded so let's just grab these two and also roll it in but this time we'll keep one segment which with these one segment situations I'll grab both sides of what was just created and then bevel it again to create kind of a double jeopardy uh, double rounding situation but really we're not trying to jump to that level yet but just like that we were able to create a really quick shape just getting in and playing with just a little bit of box cutter and control B so I went over why I like the default bevel so much. However, you can just make a selection and if you press control B, you can get something like this or roll the wheel to get segments like this. However, if we look at the very bottom of the screen, we see that we're able to basically roll the wheel to adjust the segments, but we're also able to press P to trigger changing the profile. So from here, we see that I'm able to change the profile while inside of bevel. And we also see that pressing the hotkey of A will allow me to go back to adjusting the width, which is what I'm used to. So now I am drawing what's called a profile bevel. And so this is basically the bevel from now on. And I refer to this as sole length bevel. But now from this point on, whenever I grab an edge and perform a bevel, we see that the profile is preserved, but edges are being added to it to protect the boundary. And this is a main component in my work when it comes to subdivision conversion because it allows for me to preserve what's important while also adding what's needed in order to basically protect the perimeter whenever it comes to that conversion process. So sometimes you can get in and do these things manually and actually manage it via an inset. But here I'm actually just showing how I'm able to just select these edges and begin baffling them and eventually I knew that the doubles was going to catch up with me so if we just merge by distance we see that we're fine however we raise it a little bit 
we see that we can be a little bit more than fine. So with a few supplemental edges and just added to this, we have basically protected this area enough for it to survive subdivision. And this behavior is extremely destructive. We're just talking about a one-way trip and that trip is a way to subdivision. Here we're just making some selections, filling in some loose ends. For this area, this was our initial point. So let's just press G and we can press Y in order to constrain it to Y. And since we're under vertex snapping with control shift tab, we can just snap it to here and then we can do the same with this, bring it up, snap it to this area. We can select everything and remove by distance and then select these two areas and dissolve them. So this area didn't quite clean up. So if we really want it to be OCD, we can just grab this whole loop SC0 in order to just flatten it out. But because of what we've done with this, we can now press control number and begin subdividing it. And we see that our work is still not done. So let's just merge that, delete this edge. You know, always a sneaky little vert in there. But just like that, we've performed a basic subdivision conversion on this cube. And I mean, we could have just selected the whole cube and then press control B and it just would have been short work. So I just took it the long way. But if we look at this in a more extended sense of using it, let's perform a cut with box cutter and perform another cut. And let's just control A, visual geometry to mesh. We can actually select everything and just press control B in order to protect this. The interesting thing about bevel whenever you use it in edit mode is you can press F9 and bring up the parameters for adjusting it post operation. So we can still get in here and adjust our sections or our seg segments. Um, we can adjust our profile, which they call shape at this point, which I always find a little weird. Sometimes I'll bring this back up and set things back to 0.5, which is good. But most importantly, we could talk about our miters. So by setting this to a miter of arc, we see that we're getting something a little bit more reasonable with our corners. And we could press F9 to bring the window back up. So if I hold shift and I move this gradually, we see that we're able to adjust this and just get a better result. However, we can also deal with the other miters, which is the inner and change that to arc, which always gives me unsatisfactory results. However, I'm sure there's just something you can do with the settings to actually get it to be something a little bit more agreeable like this. If we want it, I suppose to have poles happening at all of our endings. Let's see what the alternative was with sharp. That's something that I'm a little bit more uh, trustworthy of versus actually having uh, very sharp poles happening in all of my corners. But I'm in an adventurous mood. We will give it a try and see what our results are continuing on in this example. So the rest of the stuff, I suppose, um, is there if you need it. I mean, it's basically the same stuff that you would see inside the bevel modifier, but just going over it in the context of the work at hand. So from here, if we press Alt V and we look at the wireframe to mesh, this is what we're looking at. Kind of reminds me of Mario with all this plumber pipe happening in all the junction areas, kind of not optimal. It's really triggering my vision, but let's just press Q with the mesh selected and under add modifier, we can add a triangulate. So from here, we've added a triangulate modifier to the mesh that we beveled manually, which will basically add geometry to fill in the blanks. And with this, we can just select the geometry and press control two or control three in order to add two layers of subdivision. If we press alt V and don't look at the wireframe for a moment, we see that this mesh has survived subdivision and we did very minimal work in order to get it to this phase. So this is really the foundation of surviving subdivision. In fact, let's duplicate this off to the side, maybe on the X axis with shift D and let's apply the triangulate and in edit mode, let's press alt J just to see what we're looking like with quads. And that didn't work out as fluidly as I thought it would. In fact, seeing this edge move over so far is just tragic. I mean, we could go in edit mode and begin making these connections with J. However, that's outside the scope of this video, but just like that, we were able to survive subdivision. However, having a miter of arc on inner, I'm just not going to be with that. But I believe that expresses the point of bevels basic use with subdivision in edit mode. When it comes to understanding the bevel in hard ops, I first recommend, of course, take a moment and read the tooltip. We see that general click will add a bevel modifier or allow us to adjust it. Basically, control clicking will add a new bevel at 30 degrees. 
control shift will add a new one at 60 degrees and then shift clicking will allow us to bypass scale. Sometimes the rare situation will come up where you're overriding scale but you need to adjust your bevel and so shift clicking will allow you to do that. Basically other than that it gets only more complex from here once we get into the modal itself. But in context of subdivision conversion it's re relatively simple. For example if we were to just draw a box, draw another box, and then go inside our Q menu, we will begin adding a nice bevel to the mesh. We can press one in order to basically jump to the default settings that work best as far as auto smooth and bevel is concerned. This is my default state for generally working inside of Bosch Cutter I will, or Hard Ops. I will go inside and just reset the settings to default off the bat whenever I'm using bevel to just get a nice arc and a good flow. But arc will, of course, cause a few normal deviations which always causes me to follow up with a little bit of alt clicking sharpen to add a weight at normal. However, in the context of subdivision conversion, we're kind of going in a different direction. So if we press Q and we go back into bevel, we could press Z in order to look at the wireframe. But if that's not actually needed, if we were to press three, we can actually change the bevel to what I call a subdivision conversion bevel. And from here, begin modifying it. So we just click and apply and we're done. We can now go under add modifier, add a triangulate, and at this point, just pressing control three, we're able to survive subdivision. However, we see that it didn't work so well in this area. Let's press alt V, activate our wireframe, and just see what we have going on. And we see that such hacks are just not suitable in every condition. So in order to make this work, we will probably need to make a succession. So let's use Everscroll to recall this one particular boolean. And just by moving it back a little bit, we can relax this particular area and perhaps get a better solution. But let's also try going back into the bevel and either tightening it up or adding additional segments to reinforce our decisions to see if we can get something a little bit more behavioral with this particular result. And we see that that's actually a little bit better. However, we could even go in edit mode and assist the solution if we wanted to hack it along just to get something even more satisfactory whenever it comes to managing these. In fact, sometimes I don't even like having the double reinforcement happening with edges, so I'll go in and try to reduce it back to two, and we see that we're now able to survive. Let's actually move our shape back where we had it, even though it's insignificant. And now, because of the assistance that we gave it in edit mode with the additional guidance edges, we're able to guide the triangulate solution just a little bit better for this conversion into subdivision. So really, whenever it comes to subdivision, it's a really basic process to get there. For example, if we just delete that cube, bring in another cube, and we do this exact same thing again, this time without messing around, we could just go inside of bevel, press three in order to add a subdivision bevel, lower the amount of width in order to reduce the amount of overlap if you see it happening right in front of your face. And then from here, just go and add a triangulate modifier press control two and we have our mesh able to be subdivided but we see that once again we have artifacting happening in random areas because subdivision is a cruel auditor you can't just go in and play games with it it's going to require a little bit of additional guidance sometimes in order to give it an optimal solution so now we go back and look at it and just with a little bit of assistance we were able to survive this operation however we still see that some areas just aren't going to work out so I'm actually curious in why this particular area did not work out. And we see that it doesn't work out no matter what. So whenever it comes to the troubleshooting process, I will shift click ever scroll and that will take me into modifier scroll, which is also in the Q menu whenever bullions are present. If I roll the wheel forward, we begin scrolling through the particular modifiers as they are on the mesh and we see where the problem happens at this moment. Let's press Alt V and look at the face orientation and we see that our face orientation is looking good. However, there should be some sort of guidance happening in this area in order to ensure that our bevel works out. So for some reason, this edge terminates that solution causing it to fall short. So tricky, tricky bevel. However, being able to get in and troubleshoot it is definitely part of the benefit that we aspire for whenever it comes to using our tools. So let's just scroll through and we see that we get something a little bit better and now we've basically survived subdivision. So even the process of failure in something as silly as this can still be examined and you can bring it to an acceptable resolution if you just keep calm 
and just try to get analytical with what exactly is happening with your mesh because we try to provide the tools to provide that sort of workflow. Another aspect in which Bevel can come in handy is in edit mode when you need to perform some geometric corrections, even on simple vertices. For example, I have this vert and I want to connect it to these two points, but I don't want it to result in a triangle. So I can press Control Shift B in order to perform a vertex bevel on this shape, which will result in an extra edge being created, but that's fine. We can just select this edge and press Control X to dissolve it. And then by just forming a connection here, here with J, we can actually add a loop in between, turning this area into quads. Another aspect in which bevel can come in handy is by pressing Control B and then using it to basically turn one edge into two edges and then rolling the wheel to turn that into three. So here we've placed our edges. I can just press one, grab each of these points and press J to form their connection, thus solving this area. But just like that, I can use bevel to create additional geometry from what I have selected in order to keep the form but also allow it to conform with the areas that I intend to junction with. Bevel also has an active tool, however you'll rarely see me use it because I just tend to either stick in box cutter or select tool and also hovering over each of these to find which one is bevel is a little annoying sometimes, but now that we've activated bevel the active tool, we have options at the top, for example we can set our segments to two which means that with our edge selection, all we have to do is drag this little handle and we begin beveling. But in our case, if we were to set our shape to one, now whenever we drag it, we see that we're now able to create perimeter protection bevels that will protect the edges while also maintaining the surface continuity. So let us just grab all of these and do the same thing by just basically dragging this in order to create perimeter bevels. In fact, we can undo and drag it till it's just enough for all of them to meet at the center and even try something like remove doubles by distance to see if it's able to remove those four points in which we can basically get rid of the edges that are not needed. We can select this point and this point, press J. So just another way that you're able to access bevel. However, we see that as I continue working because I'm in the bevel active tool, it does begin to get in my way. And the other thing is having to go in and change things like uh, going back to point 0.5 in order to say set this to 6 and bring in say a rounded bevel is a little bit more steps than I would like but just letting you know that there is an active tool for bevel as well and it does have its uses for example just like I'm showing except we see that there's possibly a double situation happening anytime that bevel goes bad you just want to double check your geometry to make sure that all your normals are oriented the correct way but being able to go in here and set this previous to the operation actually being used can definitely come in handy. I can see some benefits to this, so I may be uh, messing with it more in the future because it does have all the settings that Bevel has to offer. For example, we can go in and change our miter from inner to or miter outer to arc from sharp and uh, activate hard and normals if we need. But really, uh, I don't like messing with normals whenever I'm getting down with my Bevel. But just like that we can get in and use the active tool as well to bevel these things interactively in a more chill setting. So the bevel helper can be brought up in hard ops by using the hotkey of control shift B, which if we press it, we see that it brings up the helper. And this comes in handy a lot, especially whenever I'm on the laptop on the couch and I need to just get in and deal with just only the bevels. You can also deal with only the booleans if you want or deal with all the bevels and all the booleans all at the same time. And sometimes this is needed for troubleshooting. This is one of my favorite troubleshooting tools in hard ops. We can also choose to collapse the presets, which makes the window just a little bit smaller in these cases where we have a lot of bevels. And we see that I'm able to click and disable certain bevel modifiers on demand in order and even adjust their settings on the fly. So just looking at these, I can tell that it's already been optimized fairly good where I have 11 segments, seven segments, eight segments, eight segments, and six segments, which means that none of these will be caught by the 30 degree threshold. However, if I were to say, control scroll over one of the values to lower the amount, we see that it does affect the way that the next bevel inline actually behaves with it. So sometimes whenever you need to get in and troubleshoot, you may need to either get in and toggle certain bevels or manipulate them as you see me doing here or go in and adjust the bevels, the booleans themselves by 
disabling and enabling certain booleans to see if they assist with getting you a better solution. For example, we see an issue happening in this particular area. So the best way for us to solve it via the helper would be to either go in and locate the boolean that's causing that issue and just get it out of there and then go under the bevels and begin toggling them off and on to figure out which one is the problem and then from there either add more segments and adjust the size of it in order to make it more accommodating with the surface because once you're this many bevels in it definitely can get a little bit confusing so for that reason the helper exists. So for this example let's press Alt V and activate wireframe and I'm going to use the inbox cutter to change my shape over to circle and we'll just use this circle as a jump off point to create a cut in the middle of this face and we see that the solution that Blender gave us for edges to make the connection were just kind of whatever. So basically if we were to press Q and we add a bevel, we see that whenever we press three that the edges just kind of go their own way. Normally things would be a little bit more random with the solution. So let's move our circle up to something that's a little bit more unacceptable. So maybe something like that is what you would generally expect when you're getting weird with your bevel modifier. But even something like this can be managed to an extent so let us press Control a for visual geometry to mesh and just go in edit mode and begin the cleanup process so this is something that is probably part of every uh, 3d artist's job as far as getting in and dealing with the mistakes that happen whenever automatic computations just don't work out it's just a part of life you know these things will be better someday maybe i don't know I'm just optimistic for the future, I suppose. But just by getting in and consolidating the points in these areas, and giving a little bit of stress relief, we're able to get this to something a little bit more acceptable. So in regards of converting this to a subdivision capable mesh, let us just dissolve that particular edge. I don't know why that was happening. We can just grab this edge and press Control B to bevel it to give ourselves additional edges, but we only really need about one additional edge where we can just form this connection and use control R to add an edge loop to form this connection and another edge loop to form this connection. So I'm adding an edge loop by just pressing control R on my keyboard and I'm just sliding things around with GG in order to just basically relax the surface a little bit. However, I could always press Alt X in order to just mirror this over to the other side using mesh machine since I have it enabled at this time and we can just begin solving this area as well. So in regards with the amount of loops on the side, I'm a type of person who will just go with a particular amount and then just try to make that work out. However, in this case, if we are just going for absolutely perfect conversion, we can just keep adding loops as needed to make this particular solution work. But because of the bevel modifier, we're able to get a pretty nice starting point with getting in and performing this conversion even though it had a slightly rocky start. In fact for this particular area we're just going to delete these faces and the way that I'm used to working with these sort of things is I will just use F2 in order to calculate it all the way across and then I will fill the top end and then finally fill the bottom end. So we see that I got a little bit preemptive. We want to jump one more then add a loop, fill this in fill this in, pressing F a couple of times, and now we've basically converted this Boolean cut into a subdivision mesh. So if I press Control 3, we see that we've now subdivided the mesh. If I press Alt V to turn off wireframe, this is our result. So because of the topological questionable choices that were made in this particular area, we see that there is something that's going to need to be reevaluated. So while I'm not a big fan of having subdivisions shown so edit mode, I'm a big fan of using subdivision for just a moment and then going back to object mode and admiring the result. Let's press control R to add in a loop cut. And with this particular loop cut, because we have vert merge on or auto merge vertices, we can just select these two edges and maybe even control click all the way over here, GG to slide, which will automatically merge these. And just by dissolving this, we now have an all quad solution happening with this area, which sometimes depending on the particular area, I'll go with a tighter or more loose solution. In fact, let's slide this area up just to tighten this relationship with the top. 
And if we press Alt V, we can look at what we have on this side versus what we had initially. And we could have just left it at that, but depending on our level of perfection that we're aiming for, we could actually get in and actually deal with these poles and get rid of them in this state since we are dealing with the symmetrical mesh. And now you're actually looking at it with a more idealized solution. So just a basic example of subdivision conversion in context of just converting a Boolean over to something that's able to survive subdivision on a basic level. So let us try the same case, but with Mesh Machine. So I'm going to go to the cutter collection, Alt H, and we're just going to press Alt P on this cutter to remove its parenting because I just know it's going to be parented. And this means that now we can move this object over to the side and we bring in our next test subject, which is also a cube. And if we press Q and difference, we can perform a cut or we can press Y and go under add Boolean and also perform that same operation. And let's just control A and now make the geometry real. Let's shift click sharpen to just set up our auto smooth. And from here, begin the process of conversion using mesh machine. However, before even all that, we could basically use I to convert this very easily where we just have to solve a few topological questions. And then from there, we could actually jump this to a nice resolution. However, the flows that we have going are kind of counter to what we're going for. So there is a reason why we wouldn't want to go that route with it. But just looking at the opportunity and attempting to take it, let's press Control Z and go all the way back to where we were. And now let's try it with the mesh, mach mesh machine. So we select this edge, we press Y. Let's try using offset. Offset's rather interesting. Because my help's off the screen, I can't really read it, but um, let's try control scroll, which will change which side you're dealing with. Oh, to control scroll to choose if you want to rebuild it with triangles, which is also rather interesting. I'm looking for the one that will actually make it slide the correct way. Maybe it's Q. Yes, so there is a way to almost make this work just right. But just wanted to try the offset solution for this. So really what we're looking at isn't the end of the world. We can just press last. However, um, I, I do not want those triangles. So let's try this again. We go under offset and we bring it out, but we can press A or Q in order to basically use loop slide. And we can bring it out to maybe something like that, which is just on the edge of acceptable. So control shift tab to set ourselves to vertex snap, G X snap to here. We've made the connection, but we see that we kind of broke this edge a little bit. So this is where I like to right click and just add an edge. Every now and then a Boolean will break an edge or something will break an edge, but either way edges have to be fixed. Merge at last, not at first, which is why it was throwing me off. And just like that, we're able to use offset to quickly add a um, perimeter protection loop to this particular area because perimeters are also very important to machine. So let us select this entire loop again. We can press Y, choose offset again. This time we'll roll the wheel in order to place this on the inside. And we see that we're just very easily able to add a perimeter loop that we can then go back and solve. And so you might be wondering why one would want to go in and do this sort of thing manually. Sometimes it's easier to just deal with it on a focused front. However, we see that, you know, it does require a particular type of selection in order for this to work out. So let's try it again. Maybe we were bad with our selection. Let's press Y. And it says that it's something about something about the geometry. So it makes me wonder, is there something about the geometry? So here we are looking at our geometry and there's definitely some curiosities abound with it. So I'm just looking for the perfect edge so I can grab it, subdivide it, merge it last, making it manifold. So it's really easy to get your mesh to lose its manifold nature whenever you're dealing with such experimental operations. However, being vigilant with it is key to the process. So let's press Y. And now we see that we're able to offset. It doesn't look so good that way. Let's press Q. And now it looks very good. And then we'll just click and apply. So let's form our selection again. Maybe it did not break the edge this time. Let's press Y. 
and we see that it did not work out. So let us see what solution we actually receive. So with this particular edge, let's right click, subdivide, select these two points, merge at last. Everything's manifold again. Let's mirror it to the other side so we don't have to think about it. And from here, make our selection once again. So we press Y, we choose offset. We're able to offset this area very nicely, which leaves us with being able to solve what we want to at the top to begin the process of converting this. So let's select all these edges. And we'll press Control B, which right now we have the default bevel, which means I'm going to add one segment and press A, or actually press P in order to adjust the profile, then press A to go back to adjusting it. So first things first is we want to set up our dominant flow. So that is this area. And perform a cut like so with the knife which means we can form this connection. We can add a loop cut, snap it to this vert, form this connection. And keep in mind that uh, Mesh Machine is not centered on subdivision workflows, that's just me. Um, I'm always misusing tools to find out their alternative purposes that I feel can be unlocked with um, unusual usage. So this is probably not exactly what machine would be condoning his tools to be used for but definitely a situation I found them to be immensely useful in in my personal work so pressing J we can form a connection here and so when it comes to this let us first mirror this equally so that way we don't have to deal with any non straight lines and we're just selecting points and pressing J which there's other ways that we could do this faster for example just deleting the face selecting everything to about here pressing E extruding it to the other side remarrying it with mesh machine and then from here just pressing F2 just fill in the blank so we're pretty much almost done with this we're just going to give it a few more options to help it out but we really don't even need to fill in every single edge in order to convert this over to be a subdivision mesh. Um, as I expressed previous, we could just use the power of triangulate in order to fill in everywhere that we left vague. And then from there, when we press control one, two, three, we're able to jump up through the levels of subdivision. So there is a few more loose ends that must be tied up. For example, this area looking just crazy means that there's a hole that was immediately made obvious by the auditor known as subdivision. We also want to turn off auto smooth. And if we look at the other side, we see that there's also something questionable happening in this area. So we are just going to find the mysterious long edge that was being smuggled in and then go in edit mode and remair to the other side. So here we are looking at our final solution. In fact, we could press alt W and use box cutter to just press control K while trying a box. Just add an additional loop here at the bottom that will allow us to just get a slightly better result. So let us place triangulate ahead. So we look at it with a more optimal display. And if we press Alt V and we look at this, there's hardly any difference between the two boxes. Once again, let us select our cutter and Alt P to clear its parent. And we will just press G and X and move it off over to the side. So from here, we can shift A and add another cube. And I will just select the shape select both of them and we'll just perform a difference operation so just shift clicking sharpen will fix the smoothing and we can just press Control a and choose visual geometry to match so we're in the same situation as before and this time i'm going to attempt to select the entire boundary from here to here in fact let's try using machine select you can press y you select l select select just one l select that time it worked. I feel there's a trick to it that I just don't understand. Let's just press Y. And from here, we can actually choose offset cut. And with offset cut, we have a variety of options we can play with in the, F, in the F9. A lot of them I still don't truly understand. However, in certain situations, mainly with curvature, this thing truly excels. However, in this particularly advanced situation with plan of a planar nature from a transition of a round shape, of a planar surface to a another more planar more linear surface we see that this does break down so that's why i started off talking about offset cut in these regards but we can also get in and play with the factor we can turn off resample we can play with the settings but 
often find that I'd rather just leave this at its defaults to avoid it from possibly crashing because that's always the byproduct of, of greatness is the instability that comes with it. But we do want to possibly increase the amount of sections happening. So we will just raise our factor. I'm just trying to get something that almost matches my surface at the bottom. However, I see it almost matching on one side, but not the other. And let's just click and apply and pretend that we were trying to just clean this up. So we will press G Y. And since we already have snapping on, we will just begin snapping. We can press G Z while holding control to snap here. Let's grab these two and press G X in order to snap to this area. And from here, we have to really evaluate this very hard. Um, some crazy things are happening with this geometry. So let's just correct it by filling in the blanks that are obviously missing. And we'll just move the geo over. And then from here, we could press G X and snap it to this vert and then press G Y and snap it to this one, allowing us to basically build this area out proper. We can just choose these two and just choose merge at last G X in order to slide. We could slide this one. We could slide this one up and basically snap it to this one GX snap it to this area so jumping back into our solution in progress we'll just grab this vert press GZ and just snap it precisely to that area we can press alt X and mirror to the other side and I'm going to basically dissolve this particular loop which will get things to go back straight and then we can re it in order to get it to go back to being symmetrized now from this point we can choose to dictate our flows and how we're going to exit them on this shape so we don't even need to select everything we could just press k and begin knifing work our way over to the edge with these two we can press m merge at last and we have these unsettled junctions that are happening all along the inside. So these are definitely going to require us to get particular with a solution. And we see that there's quite a few doubles that are happening here. So you can see that there's a reason that I discussed offset first before going to this. However, there are cases in which this definitely excels. So let us just make a selection, control click all the way over to the other side and let's just make it a circular selection even though this isn't what we're trying to solve and let us press y and go to boolean cleanup and we roll the wheel in order to choose what we want to protect and maybe something like that will give us a more satisfactory result and we see that all the connections have been made even at the expense of some areas being compromised so let us add a loop that will reinforce this side so we're basically forcing a flow even though it's not necessarily promoted and we're going to have to make a decision. So I'm choosing to bevel this area, which will give me this loop that we can dissolve. We can perform a merge at this area, perform a merge at this area, basically solving it. And we'll just slide this up and use this as some additional reinforcement after dissolving this point. So we could press Alt X to send this to the other side. And from here, let's just solve this in the fastest way, which is to just delete these faces and select the entire ring. We can press B to basically debox or um, B in the middle mouse button to deselect. And we're just gonna extrude to the other side and then re it. So from here, we can just go in edit mode, begin filling in these faces, grab this piece, take it over to the other side, fill it in as well, and then just re-symmetrize it whenever we're done and we don't have to deal with that anymore. So basically we've solved this entire interior area and forced the flow aside from one area that just will not flow. So it looks like we didn't need that extra loop after all. We just needed to slide some things around, renegotiate some of our areas. And this area also has a double. So if we look at it, we see that this connection wasn't entirely made. So we'll just let autovert merge deal with that. Merge at last. At last, at last, Alt X, jump over to the other side. And we're fairly close to being done with this. So we could just grab this edge and just use Control B in order to meet. Let's select everything and merge by distance to get rid of that one point. 
and we could do the same thing to these other sides. And with each attempt, we can get slightly lazier with our solution. So we just want these to meet up just right. So that's about right there. We select everything, merge by distance, and just bring them over to the other side. And so with these areas, just by dissolving some edges that aren't needed, we can pretty much clean this up to quads pretty easily. And then by using box cutter, we can just press control X to just jump over the knife and just add a few additional loop cuts just to help our mesh out with the solution. Because instead of solving every single edge to go to somewhere satisfactory, we can actually just from this point, just add a modifier, triangulate, jump into subdivision and look at our result and compare it with all of our previous results. So if we press Alt V, we look at the, this shape also has a circle pairing it to it. So I, I'll never know if I'm needing to use it again. We'll just move all of these off on the side and just kind of examine all of our solutions and the amount of speed that it took for each of us to get to these respective points when it came to the mesh. So if we look at the wireframe, we could see that we definitely would want something like this, but we could definitely shorten our work and just take a lot of shortcuts in order to get to the solution without even having to go through all of the rigmarole of solving every single loose end, thanks to the power of triangulate and its capabilities whenever it comes to subdivision. So showing mesh machine in such a edge case is unflattering to it as a tool. So I'll take a moment to at least show it in a case where it does excel. So we'll press Q and we'll change this to a sphere cast, just changing our cube over to a quick sphere and we'll press S and scale this down, press S X in order to scale this out. And now we've set up a interesting conundrum. So I'm just going to select both shapes, press Y and we'll choose to add Boolean and roll the wheel in order to turn this into a union. And from here, we'll press Y and there should be an option to apply, but we should select the target. Then we could choose to apply, which will basically get rid of the Boolean, but it appears that we need to press control A and then just delete it manually. So no big deal. Let's just shift click sharpen in order to activate auto smooth for this, getting it to look a lot better. And so from here, I'm just going to select one edge and we'll press Y in order to bring up mesh machine. And we could just choose select L select and it didn't make the cut. So let's try it again. And with an additional edge, it appears that we were able to make the connection and select everything around. So here we can press Y, go into Boolean cleanup, and it says something is going on with having a cylindrical selection. So let's just double check what we have. You know, I actually see that there are some connections that didn't quite make it. Let's try that again. Y, select, L select, Y, Boolean cleanup, and this time we're able to do it. So just one mistake could throw you off with your selection. So we're just moving the mouse after choosing either A or B. One of my favorite parts of using this is just kind of examining the type of solutions it gives. So from here, we could press Y and use offset cut under mesh machine experimental tools. And we see that we now have this nice offset cut. So from here, we could just mark this as sharp. And as far as getting it to integrate with this previous surface, I actually have a way of doing that where I will just select it marked by a seam, control numpad minus to select it back one from this perfect loop, shift tilde to basically do a boundary selection of what's happening with this particular selection. And we can press Y and go to Boolean cleanup and just roll the wheel to begin cleaning it up, but basically choose the right side in order to maintain the continuity of what we have going on. So from here, we can just do the same thing, select this side, but grow it out the opposite way. Press shift tilde to select just the boundary of that. From here, press Y, go under Boolean cleanup, and we wanna maintain the green and eat the red. And just like that, we've now performed a nice merge between these two surfaces. And so because we have the surface, we're able to just quickly grab this and just bevel it. But also because of the way that we solve this, we can add a level of subdivision to it and get it to look a little bit better. But we could even go so far as to add a smooth modifier via hops, shift scroll it up the stack 
and just roll the wheel to get it to look a little bit better. We see that with default smooth, it kind of rubs the whole shape out of existence with enough iterations. But because of this particular type of workflow, we did add an option under smooth where basically if you shift click auto vertex group, you can add a vertex group that omits what's marked. And so whenever we roll it, we're actually smoothing out what is not marked sharp, which is the edge in the middle, giving us this as our result. We can go in still and actually remove this sharp marking, allowing it to get a nice transition. Just like that, we're able to perform a rather difficult maneuver relatively quick, just using a little bit of mesh machine. Even though our flow isn't absolutely perfect, we were able to at least survive this level of subdivision. So this is one of the cases I enjoy going in and just testing out with mesh machine from time to time just to see how far I'm able to push my mesh. Bevel in regards with hard ops has a couple of ways of approach. For example, I can tab into edit mode, press two in order to go into edge select, select an edge, press Q and control click mark in order to activate bevel. We can press one in order to set it to default. We could even press three, just like talking in the previous section to turn it into a subdivision conversion. We can press one and we're back into using just it as a default bevel. However, we're setting this up on a vertex group in edit mode. We can also select these two edges and control click mark again. However, let's right click and instead of using mark, let's go under add modifier and let's just control click bevel, which will add a mo new modifier to this particular vertex group where I can press one to set it to default settings. I can roll the wheel to adjust my sections and let's just go for something like this. I can just tab into object mode and basically all the bevels that we're looking at at this point have been set up in edit mode and we can just control click the option for bevel in the Q menu in object mode, and we're now adding an option, or we're now adding a bevel for object mode for this shape. So we now have three bevels, as you can see in the modifier list in the bottom left. From here, let's alt click to add a weighted normal on sharpen. One of my favorite ways to quickly get to weighted normal. However, you can always go under add modifier and just click on weighted normal, and they'll also add one for you. So let's just shift right click to place our cursor at this point on the surface and shift A to add a cube. Let's S Z in order to scale it down. And from here, we're just bringing in our shape and let's select both of these shapes and choose difference. So instead of having it on exact, let's use the F9 to change it over to fast. And from here, change it to an inset. And we also want to not keep the bevels or we maybe do want to keep the bevels. Had to think about that one for a moment, but we do want to bypass the sorting. So let's actually turn sort off, which actually will place it on another level. And we can just click to apply and press one to get this out of our, out of our site. So if we control click bevel again, we've added a, another bevel. So we now have four bevels added to the surface. And so we have this basically interacting with this particular area. This is a good exercise if you're looking to get familiar with hard ops and just bevels in general. It's just a process of stacking up the various types of bevels that are available to you non-destructively. So from here, we'll just use box cutter. And we see that because it was an inset, the normals are actually different with the surface. So an interesting thing about the normals that comes from inset or uh, basically solidifies that you can bring up solidify and adjust the solidification settings. But if we press four, we can turn this into basically a different type of solidify where it utilizes some settings. Let's see, let's double check that. Yeah, instead of using simple, it uses complex, which may result in normals actually orienting the correct direction, which is just interesting about the behavior whenever it comes to inset. You would think it's something that we would have on by default, but it is still experimental and fails in more situations than it succeeds in. So it is just one of those things that you should just get in there and give it a try. So at this point, we have a multitude of modifiers happening on our mesh, most of them bevels, but we do have a couple of bullions in the mix. From here, let's go under operations and talk about another way for us to add bevels and that's through step. Just by clicking step in a non-destructive setting, it will add another bevel at 50% of the previous bevel. And this means if we begin cutting with box cutter, we're now cutting with a finer bevel than the previous bevel. So therefore the angle is actually failing. This particular test that we're demonstrating is a test of angles. So one of the important things with bevel is the ability to quickly change the angle whenever you're working with it. So just by holding alt and scroll, you're able to bring the bevel back to something a little bit more reasonable. And we saw that 
over in the top right we were actually grabbing the wrong corner by accident so that's one of the things that happens whenever you fail the game of angles when it comes to using the multiple bevel system and playing with multiple angles at the same time is it does keep you kind of constrained in a boxy format however it's a talk for another day whenever it comes to utilizing weight and just kind of breaking that that conformity but with this shape containing all these modifiers we can just go in press q shift click ever scroll and just press shift spacebar and we begin just auto scrolling through this process and we can just see all of these modifiers that we set up on this mesh we're now up to nine modifiers and most of them are bevels and we can see that all of them were able to play in tandem thanks to this little balancing act that really is more difficult to master than i let on it's something that I believe that with a little bit of practice, it becomes something trivial, especially once you begin integrating the troubleshooting process into your work. However, these, this is the basic fundamentals of Bevel and just how you can interact with it inside of HardOps. However, even inside of Modifier Scroll, we have a relationship with Bevel. So if I press Shift Spacebar to just stop auto-scrolling, we can click on this dot to bring open the expanded UI. And if you were to control click any bevel modifier, we see that the settings that are most crucial to the bevel modifier are able to be modified inside of the scroller itself. So this is something that's new to hard ops and is present if you have the latest version installed. But it's one of those things that I have been meaning to get around to talk about, but just goes to show our level of commitment whenever it comes to supporting the bevel modifier inside of hard ops and the level that we're willing to go to as far as creating systems to manage it even during a troubleshooting scroll you can still get in and get intimate with your bevel modifier just as easily as if you press Control shift b and went into a helper exclusively dedicated to the bevel helper and of course keep in mind if these hotkeys are hard to remember just clicking on the hops button and the queue will list all of the hotkeys that are relevant for you to get the most balanced hard ops experience so if we were to look at this object frontally and press D and change our shape over to N-Gon, basically regular N-Gon, and we begin drawing our shape, we can begin pressing B in order to bevel this shape. So I'm just going to click on this last point, organize with the first one, then right click to stop. And we could just drag the bevel dot in order to bevel this shape and we see that we're able to bevel this up to a certain amount. However, let's say that instead of looking at this as a wire shape, I could press H and look at it as a solid shape. But I wanted to adjust this bevel to be something more variable. I held shift while clicking to complete this operation, which resulted in this shape being kept live. So just a reminder to users that you can go into the bevel modal and still adjust your bevel. However, you're also able to go in edit mode and select particular marked edges and just basically alt clicking mark will allow you to adjust the bevel weight of that particular edge, allowing you to get something a little more variable. So sometimes it's required in order to just get a very specific result. Sometimes you don't want all the bevels to be equal. And this is the recommended method at this time, at least until we get the ability to deal with individual points back. At this time, just by bringing it all the way to zero on the bevel weight, we see that it just completely disappears. However, you can always just press Q and unmark in order to completely remove a bevel. So with the bevel being like this, we have we now have a lot more versatility with it and can take it up to even higher numbers. So we see that this is the clamp area. So if we wanted to increase the bevel even more, we could, for instance, select this edge, unmark it, select this edge, alt-click mark in order to lower the bevel weight to something like, say, 0.3. And after lowering it, we could just press Q, go under bevel, and from here, begin adjusting our width to something a little bit more conformative, but we're able to get further and further as we renegotiate the weight on particular edges. So I can select this edge, and by alt-clicking mark in the Q menu, go in and make adjustments. Alternatively, alt-clicking mark actually activates under operations the option for basically dealing with the bevel weight, which no longer needed to have a dedicated option. But just a little bit about how you can deal with individual weights inside of box cutter via hard ops and get more control over ingon.